This is educative video of microsurgical management of middle cerebral artery aneurysm with rupture with intracerebral hemorrhage. This 48 years lady hypertensive on irregular treatment presented with sudden severe headache, vomiting and seizures. Lapsed into ulterior sensorium three days prior to admission with loss of power in the left side limbs. Examination showed she was deeply unconscious, Glasgow coma score of 5 and dense hemiplegia on the left side. With this, she was investigated with the CT scan brain and MRI scan brain, showed a large right temporal parietal deep-seated hematoma going up to the internal capsule and basal ganglion and extending into the ventricles with midline shift and mass effect. With that, she was subsequently investigated with CT angio and which showed a large aneurysm originating from the right middle cerebral artery bifurcation which was pointing laterally and superiorly as shown in these angiogram images. She was taken up for surgery, underwent right frontotemporal terional craniotomy. These are the steps of craniotomy. A small incision is made frontotemporal region going up to the skull base. We prefer to make a free bone flap. The temporal muscle is separated up to the root anteriorly to the zygoma and posteriorly to the zygomatic arch and the, and the root of the zygomatic arch. The burho, three burr holes are made and then joined with the craniotomy cutter anteriorly, posteriorly and to the skull base. The whole craniotomy is taken out, taken down to the skull base up to the terion and that is the key burr hole. The free bone flap is elevated and as shown here, dura is separated from the bone to avoid the injury to the brain and avoid the dural tear. The bone is taken out and that is the, the taking the craniotomy to the skull base completely. Next important step is to decompress the terion medial sphenoid wing or lateral sphenoid wing completely flush with the anterior skull base by drilling the, the sphenoid wing and bringing it down to the anti anterior and middle skull base. This is a very important step because the, the drilling of the sphenoid wing as flush as possible with the skull base reduces the, the incidence of brain retraction subsequently and avoids undue retraction of the frontal and temporal lobes. One must spend time in brain drilling this. Next is the dura is open with the base towards the skull base as shown here. Now I want you to see the brain surface is diffuse subarachnoid hemorrhage. It is red and swollen and appears little angry. The dura is stitched, hitched to the temporalis muscle as tight as possible so that it doesn't come in the way during the surgery. Now since the brain is tight, we need to, we need to retract gently the temporal lobe. Next most important step is to open the sylvian fissure. In middle cerebral artery bifurcation aneurysms or trifurcation aneurysms, we usually prefer to open the sylvian fissure from medial to lateral. Otherwise, the sylvian fissure in majority of the cases is open from lateral to medial. Here, we prefer to open medial to lateral so as to avoid the injury or intraoperative undue rupture of the of the aneurysm during the opening of the sylvian fissure if the aneurysm is situated superficially in the sylvian fissure first the keratico optic system is open and now you can see there is a significant subarachnoid blood in the sylvian fissure and in the keratico optic system next once we open that release the csf helps in relaxing the brain to some extent. Next, the medial end of the sylvian fissure is being opened. One must remember while opening the sylvian fissure, no vessel, artery or a vein which come in the way of the opening of the sylvian fissure 
should be injured or, or damaged. This is a very important step to avoid post-operative ischemia to the temporal and frontal lobes and deeper parts of the brain. Now I want you to see the medial end of the ciliary fissure is open. Now we are seeing the optic nerve and internal carotid artery. The blood clots in the basal system, supracellular system and the keratico optic system are, are, are removed and the artery is exposed very well. Next important step is to expose the bifurcation of internal carotid artery. It's of utmost importance to have the proximal control of medicinal artery. Now you see the thick blood clots in the in the keratic optic system and supracellular system are evacuated and now I want you to see the optic nerve on the on the right side and internal carotid artery bifurcation we have exposed. And you can see the anterior cerebral artery going anteriorly and medially and the middle cerebral artery coursing laterally. Once we expose the internal carotid artery bifurcation, gently follow the middle cerebral artery in the ciliary fissure. As you start following it, you start seeing the perforators, lenticulostriate arteries originating from the posterior and superior aspects of the M1, that's middle cerebral artery, going posteriorly and superiorly to supply basal ganglion and internal capsule and caudate nucleus. Under any circumstances, these lateral lenticulostriate vessels should be injured or damaged during our dissection. All dissection should be done under high illumination and high magnification. This is of utmost importance. No vein or artery during the ciliary fissure dissection should be damaged or injured. Take your own time and gently dissect and keep washing at every stage away during the dissection to push away the blood which comes in the way. Now I want you to see we have reached the aneurysm complex already. That is the dome of the aneurysm and on the surface just superior to the dissector probably that is the area which is ruptured uh, and, and caused the hematoma and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now we have exposed the, the, the anterior branch of uh, middle cerebral artery bifurcation that is M2 anterior division which is being exposed now and the posterior division is now exposed. Now that is the area where the aneurysm was ruptured. Now most important is we have to expose the bifurcation and we must see the divisions of distal divisions that is M2 segments middle cerebral artery AM2 segments of the bifurcation before we go ahead with the clipping of the aneurysm. Always every step we keep washing with the pepper in saline to prevent vasospasm due to the surgical handling, dissection and coagulation and, and the subarachnoid bleed. Now I want you to see the perforators very well. Now you see the M1. Now slowly we have exposed the posterior branch or posterior division of MCA bifurcation that is the M2 posterior M2 is exposed that is the M2 which is going posteriorly I want you to see it appears to be in spasm here gently the M2 is exposed and the blood clot surrounding are removed now that is the fundus of the aneurysm aneurysm appears to be quite big now we would like to have an ICG before we go ahead and clip the aneurysm and see the configuration of the aneurysm surrounding vessels and proximal M1 and distal M2 originating from the aneurysm and the air relation to the aneurysm neck and the fundus and see to that we don't include the, these branches into the clip before we study this and confirm the positions during the ICG and, and avoid undue injury to these distal vessels and the proximal vessels. This is of utmost importance to have a good outcome post-operatively. 
that is flow 800 again confirming the lenticulostriates originating from M1 that is the lateral lenticulostriates now that is the M1 and going distally you can see the veins and arteries in the sylvian fissure that is the dome of the aneurysm now M2 is exposed at anterior division as well as the posterior division with the ICG and flow 800 very nicely and clearly demonstrated that is the M2 posterior division now we are preparing ourselves to apply the clip on the aneurysm neck and, and obliterate the aneurysm now once that is done and confirmed we take a, a broad tipped long clip and pass it in between the M2 divisions on the this aneurysm neck is quite broad and wide neck and, and big aneurysm gently we advance the clip very slowly and gently without traumatizing the neck of the aneurysm and once we confirm that whole neck is included in the clip the clip is released and aneurysm is clipped now i want you to see both the m2 divisions are very well preserved now once we clip the aneurysm and obliterate we would like to have icg again to confirm the comprehensive or safe clipping of the aneurysm so that we are not included the important proximal or distal vessels of the middle cerebral artery circulation into the aneurysm clip now that is a posterior division that is m2 is very well preserved and not included in the clip and m1 is also very well preserved that's anterior uh, anterior m2 and posterior m2 are very well preserved and m1 is very well preserved and all the lenticulostrides veins and arteries are very well preserved this is a safe comprehensive clipping and the aneurysm fundus has collapsed completely and there is no filling of the aneurysm so dissect it and confirm all around that whole neck of the aneurysm is included in the clip and no part of the aneurysm is left behind now we open the aneurysm the ruptured area and there is no free flow free flow of the blood inside the aneurysm as you see there the next important step is to evacuate the hematoma a big hematoma which is there in the temporal lobe going into the deeper parts of basal ganglion and caudate nucleus and internal capsule now put the small in small coagulation distal to the aneurysm that is the area of rupture which was pointed posteriorly and medially the blood clot is followed and gently blood clot is sucked and dissected completely try to evacuate as much as possible without injuring the surrounding normal temporal lobe because the blood clot will be adherent because already today probably is the fifth day and the clot will be adherent to the brain we should not suck out the brain along with the blood clot whatever clot is coming easily is taken out we can leave behind 20 to 10 to 20 percent 30 percent for blood clot posterior but major clot, clot is removed the mass effect and the swelling and, and the edema should be should be should be reduced that is the aim of evacuating the blood clot now we are going deeper into the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle where the clot is inside now gently that clot is removed to have a good csf flow and circulation in the ventricles that is a deeper part of the deeper part of the blood clot which is evacuated how much is taken out we, we, we have not seen but Whatever is easily accessible and, and seen is evacuated to reduce the size of the clot and mass effect. This is very important subsequently to reduce the brain edema. Once that is done, we wait for 10-15 minutes with increase in the blood pressure to see that there is no ooze in the bed of the clot. Hemostasis is achieved and confirmed 
and dura is not closed because brain is tense and swollen bone flap is replaced and scalp is closed same day evening ct scan brain done shows the clot is taken out significantly mass effect is reduced there is no infarction and ventricles are normal she was ventilated overnight next day morning she was extubated and recovered completely glasopoma score 15 left side weakness persists and she is obeying all the commands and on day 5 with physiotherapy she is taking everything orally and trying to communicate on day 10 she is discharged left hemiparesis also improved to great extent she now can walk with the support it's a very significant improvement this is our neuroanesthesia team and our treating physician. Our presence online with more than 525 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guided, educative neurosurgical operative procedural videos on our YouTube neurosurgical video atlas. Thank you very much for your